So I uh, just wanted to provide a, an opportunity to answer any questions that you might have about the television deal uh, that was announced this morning. Uh, don't have a lot of answers because you already know most of the details, if not all. Um, excited, a great opportunity for uh, all of our athletes in, in the Big, uh, Big Ten Conference, and including uh, UCLA and, and USC when they transition in 24. Uh, unbelievable exposure for our institutions and the student athletes we serve. So really excited about a new uh, diversity in, in our platforms. Uh, having Fox, who's been an unbelievable partner uh, over the years, uh, and then to add uh, powerhouses like CBS and, and NBC and what they bring uh, is just it's a phenomenal opportunity. Um, having a traditional linear um, network uh, is important, uh, but to be able to dip our toe a little bit stronger into the direct uh, to consumer streaming uh, is another great opportunity. So really excited about it, and uh, you guys are have all the details from the release, so I'll answer any questions you, you guys may have. Can you fill in the financial blank? No, I can't. Uh, there's a lot of details still being worked out on the financials. Uh, it will be significant, uh, but it's not going to be what people are reporting. Yeah, I mean, when, you know, when people are saying a billion, do you think, I mean, is that in the ballpark? Or well, you know, pe so people, and I don't know what their math is, but they're probably looking at the, the older deal and projecting what the current deal is and doing math. Uh, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see and uh, as, as they finalize the, the actual contracts. You know, Bill? I was told Bill? that you and uh, President Johnson asked hard questions of Kevin Warren and during the whole process, what were the kind of things that you were concerned about, not concerned about, what were your issues that you really wanted to make sure were addressed? Well, I think first and foremost, we needed to, and great question, Bill, we needed to make sure that we had partners who understood who we are. And we're going to promote not just the games, but promote the student athletes and, and promote the institutions. Uh, you look at what NBC did uh, with providing $100,000 per school and advertising dollars to, to be able to talk about the institutions. It harkens me back to when we did the Fox BTN deal at the beginning. We had institutional dollars in, in those packages for commercials and, and things of that nature. So that was important. We want partners who. Um, and ESPN and ABC was that way before, but we wanted partners who understood that. <laughs> Secondly, um, you know, the diversity in, in the marketplace that we are going to be in, in the top three markets in the country, we wanted to make sure there was access. So uh, dipping our toe in the direct consumer uh, through streaming, uh, we needed to make sure we had a partner that understood. We're still sensitive to that. You know, there's people in our country and in our environment here in Ohio uh, that you know, struggle uh, with, with that concept. So we need to try and ease our way into that and get people comfortable. It's kind of like mobile ticketing. And so uh, we, we got to get there. So we want to partner us that way. But the, the money was huge because uh, our expenses are going up every single year for all of our schools. And so whoever came to the table with, with good packages uh, uh, and the preliminary packages are outstanding. And that was important to us as well. ABC, ESPN are, were great partners, and, and um, you know I, uh, we enjoy tremendous uh, success with them as partners, and they're doing great for all of you know higher education and in college athletics. So um, you know it's a different marketplace, different world now with different platforms, and uh, going to miss them. Uh, but we have new great platforms moving forward. I think Clay, you were next. You said there are a lot of particulars you don't know. Mm -hmm. How many appearances on each network? Right. Yeah, we, we have a lot to do. Uh, you know, we've talked about no divisions, but we haven't finalized that decision. We need to come together and finalize that decision. We need to bring in uh, Mike Bone and, and Martin Jarman into those conversations and start meetings around that. Uh, the, the television partners need to, need to finalize the picks, you know, who picks first, who picks second, you know, those type of things. We need to... Uh, uh, finalize if we go no divisions then um, you know what's our tiebreakers I mean there's just so many different things we need to ultimately get to that we just haven't gotten to yet because we're so focused on that on this and uh, Kevin's done a great job with this the negotiations were, were you know like he said publicly a chessboard and uh, really the move
moves were unbelievable, and he, he did a great job in, in masterminding this. But now we got to get down to the work. We got to get to the details. Uh, you know, we have eight games on Peacock, so how are those games determine how they're selected. Um, we have made a determination that uh, in the future you won't know our conference games for the next year until sometime in October. I mean, we're used to having our games like five years, ten years out. Well, that's going to change. And so we got to finalize that, you know, what's the date? And, and so it's kind of like we're waiting for basketball schedules for the season right now. So it, it's a new culture for us, and, and, uh, but it's important. And so there's just a lot of work to be done, and um, uh, we're, we're, we're ready to uh, roll up our sleeves with our new partners in the, in the mix and try and uh, determine what's best for us moving forward. What is based on a schedule strength kind of thing or how teams are – our teams are projected to be the next year? Don't know. We got to figure that out. We know it's a model we got to go to and include our television partners in that process and, and structure it and have them be a part of the conversation. Now that we have them, we can begin that conversation and determine that type of thing. Is it you know, based upon who's going to be strong next year or based upon dates or whatever? Uh, go from there. That's something we haven't discussed, but frankly, they're already getting a piece of television revenue. You know, when you, when you aggregate in, we're, you're all familiar with our circle of care and all the people that we, we put around our student athletes and trainers, strength coaches, sports psychologists, nutritionists, academic counselors, and, you know, all the, just keep going around the list. And um, that's how we fund those positions. That's how we fund this building. That's how we fund this new field. That's how we fund the new field in the stadium. That's how we fund the security that we'll need for 103,000 people in the stadium and maybe 30,000 outside uh, for the tailgating uh, while the game is going on. So uh, they actually already get a piece. Uh, it might not be directly in their pocket, but it's, it's an investment in them. Uh, so that doesn't mean that the scholarship model might not change. I mean, this is the first year for us of the Austin distribution where every single student athlete is getting over $5,900, uh, which is about a $6 million hit to our budget. So uh, they're already getting it. So do we do more down the road? Possibly, and that will be discussed, but uh, not in the form of pay for play. Uh, otherwise, I'm out. Hey, Gene, along those lines, Nick Saban estimated that investment in each of these athletes at four hundred thousand dollars a year. Is that I mean you talk about forty million dollars right. for football and a hundred kids, is that that's a possibility. I haven't done that math. That's a real good, good good exercise to do. I haven't done that since I was at Iowa State. But yeah, that's that's a good one. When you when you prorate the personal investment that is made in an individual athlete, the equipment, the massage therapy, you just keep going. Some of them do acupuncture. You just keep going. Um, the dollars that we pay, um, yeah, that, that's a huge investment in your future. And, and that's why we have many of our student athletes who leave us and go pro or have an opportunity to, to get a job before they even graduate. And so we make a huge investment in developing them as people uh, as well as developing as athletes. So. Nick's probably somewhere spot on in that neighborhood. Now I'm going to have to go back and, and do that exercise. But, yeah, he's that's that's spot on. I haven't yeah. done that in a long time. We have time for a couple more. Yeah. I want to make sure Christy uh, from Channel 4 uh, gets a question in. Adam, did you get one yet? Okay. Christy and then Adam. Okay. Uh, to your right, Gene. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's gonna, it's, first of all, you're going to have those of us, those of you who were here when Fox came on board uh, in BTN, there's going to be a, a high level of excitement with CBS and NBC. And all the intellectual property that exists within those organizations are going to come to bear to make sure we engage the fans. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but I, I do know uh, that, you know, out of the shoot, they're going to be jacked up and they're going to be brainstorming on ways to make sure that we continue to engage the fans. Uh, when you look at the fact that NBC has um, uh, NFL sun Sunday night, uh, think about the, the Big Ten being mentioned in that space. And if you're you know, a Cleveland Browns fan like I am, I still am regardless, 
um, because that's my home, that's where I grew up, that's where I was bred. At the end of the day, if I'm watching that game, hopefully I hear about Big Ten and I'm a fan. So I think there'll be different things over time, uh, but um, it's hard to say what they'll be. But I, I know that they're excited, and you know I, I know uh, those uh, producers and, and they're they're Jack. It's, it's going to be fun. It's, uh, it's, it won't be hard. It'll just be different. You know, Fox is going to broadcast basketball games, and CBS is going to broadcast basketball games. For the first time, our, our women's basketball championship game will be nationally televised, so it won't be difficult to access. It'll just be different. To be different. Um, those games that end up on Peacock, yes. For some people, it'll be different unless you're a Yellowstone fan like I am. you got Peacock already. So, it, it, so there's a reality that... Um, the platforms will be there. Um, you know, I think you guys have the charts and it shows how many basketball games will be on Fox, CBS, and, and, um, and NBC. So um, I think it will be different, but not really that hard. Now, when it gets into you know some of the direct to consumer you know stuff, that might be a little more challenging for some. Uh, but uh, otherwise, the linear platforms are just going to be a what channel you turn to. Yeah, that's a possibility. There's some inventory there, but I, I don't see that right now unless something happens. Um, obviously, Chris and I had a great conversation about this. You know, he'll, he'll in our non-conference schedule, we'll schedule games against teams whose television package is ESPN, you know, ACC, for example, or SEC, for example. Uh, so when we go there, we still have a presence on ESPN. So there'll be other schools in our league that will do that naturally. I'm sure, you know, Tom at, at Michigan State will do the same. Uh, so... We'll have a presence there. It'll just be probably not at home. Here you go, Austin, Nathan, and or Nathan, uh, Austin, and Dan, and then we're gonna wrap up. Before you said that, before you said that expenses are rising every year, yeah. and that's why this deal was important. Is that just because of the, the usual cost increases annually with operations, or are you already looking ahead, regardless of what your personal feelings are about paying players that's right. revenue sharing, whatever? That there needs to be sort of a stockpile building. There you go. What do you want me to answer now? So, no, so you're, you're right on. I mean, our current expenses, uh, we have fixed expenses that just go up every year. Personnel services, game operations, officials, things of that nature just naturally go up. Um, but then, to your point, looking down the road, does our scholarship model change to a point where we actually think about what other things beyond the Austin um, dollars do we allocate to the scholarship model to provide student athletes extra benefits because things may change in that space so yeah I'm I'm looking down the road but I'm also looking at that five to seven percent that we have in, in increases every single year in some uncontrollable costs I mean travel costs this year for our teams this is not just football this is all sports have gone up significantly and so we have to charter some teams more now so that cost will rise. So I can just keep going on, but you, 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 you're right. It's current expenses, and then I'm kind of trying to look down the road a little bit and, and praying that we have a 12-team playoff and there's more money there too. <laughs> Austin, how would you structure? James, do you think that the NBC piece increases the odds of Notre Dame going to Big Ten? I know that the contract allows for expansion. Ways to, yep. Uh, do you think that that puts pressure on them? Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I'm gonna start with my normal. I love my alma mater. Got a great education there, um, and hope we, and assume we're gonna you know, gonna beat them on September 3rd, like we we historically have done. Um, but um, you know, I, I I don't know. I really don't. Um, I know that having ESPN helps. Uh, having e, uh, NBC helps, um, but you know, they're so ingrained in that independent culture. Um, I think scheduling in the future may have something to do with it. I think whatever happens with the CFP and access may have something to do with it. Um, but 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure this is going to move the needle that much for them. They, they really cherish their independence. But I love my alma mater. Separate way playing. You've been someone who's advocated for opening up the college ball playoff to multiple mm -hmm. media partners. How you know, integral do you think the Big Ten will be in those conversations now that you do have these three different partners that could potentially you know, be a part of that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that uh, uh, provides uh, uh, another, um, provides more avenues for those teams when it does go out to market to bid because they will have familiarity in this space. And, Glad uh, President Johnson's on the uh, CFP Board of Managers and my colleague uh, Ward Manuel's on the Selection Committee, so Big Ten has a presence in that space. And, uh, so, yeah, I, uh, hopefully um, NBC and CBS uh, now uh, will bid on that when that opportunity presents itself. And follow up on that, I know you've been an advocate of you know, the CFP potentially creating its own governing body for mm -hmm. college football. There was a report yesterday that that was discussed this week. Oh, really? um, uh, there's been discussions, but there's been discussions about other models. Uh, and, and my intent in throwing that out was just to make sure we start discussing uh, our governance structure. For us to sit here and think that the governance structure we have is working uh, is, is naive, it's flawed, you got your head in the sand. So I just wanted to create the conversation when I threw that out there. Although I do like that model, uh, there's some other models that others have presented that are viable, and I'm curious about those. So um, the discussion around a new governance structure has gotten traction. The one that I proposed under the CFP <laughs> has gotten some traction as well as others. So that's what's most important. We're talking about it now. now who knows what the answer will be, uh, but we're talking finally, and that's good. So I'm glad to hear that the, the president's talked about it. That's good news. Are you in favor of going no divisions? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. First time somebody's really asked me that question. But yeah, I am. I, I, yeah. Well, I would go. You know, to me, I'd go next week. But, but you know, obviously it's a process. So, um, I, I've gotten to the point where I, I'm comfortable going no divisions. Uh, I'm in that. Uh, like I said earlier, we need to talk about tiebreakers and those type of things, right? Um, so we we got to get down to the details around that and. Uh, but I also want to hear what our television partners have to say, um, which is why we've waited until we knew who they are. I don't, I don't know what their perspectives are. I want to hear it. Uh, so um, I'm in favor of it. I think it'll, it'll be better for us, particularly when UCLA and USC gets into the mix. Another reason we'll announce the, the next year's schedules in October it gives you more flexibility to be creative. And um, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of it.